Hey there, Roamers. Welcome to the Roam in Your Home podcast and YouTube channel, where we get to hear from full-time RVers, unpack their experiences, and learn actionable advice to help you roam in your home too. I'm your host, Jamie Williams. Thank you so much for being here. Buckle up, my friend. Let's get ready to go on an adventure together right now. Welcome back to the Roam in Your Home podcast, the show where we dive into the world of RV living with tips, stories, and insights from those who live it every day. I'm your host, Jamie Williams. Boy, do I have such a fun episode for you today. I had the absolute pleasure interviewing Nellie and Bryce from the Jurgies. So apparently, I've been living under a rock and just recently discovered them. I know, I know, that's crazy. So I started binge watching so much of their content and obviously became a huge fan along with the rest of the world. (laughs) I can't wait for you to get to know them better and hear all about their beautiful story of how they got started doing this RV life, all the amazing things they've done and the exciting things they're doing now. They are hosting the most epic summer camp at their gorgeous RV park in Swan Valley, Idaho, and you won't want to miss hearing all about it. Check the link in the show notes to get your tickets. You need to be there. I'm so honored to have them on the show and share this awesome conversation with you. Today, you'll hear part one and come back next week for part two. You won't want to miss it. So I won't make you wait any longer. Please help me give a warm welcome to Nellie and Bryce. Hi, Nellie and Bryce. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. I am so excited about this conversation. I have been living under a rock and I am a new follower but I am a huge fan of yours. I've been binge watching <laughs> everything I can. I have more to catch up on, but I am so excited to get to know you guys better and for our listeners to learn more about you and what you have going on. So thanks so much for being part of the show. Yeah, yeah. thanks for having us. We're stoked. I'm glad you're a fan. Oh, awesome. Glad you're not like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to start off with Tell us your story. I've read it. I'm like in tears. It's such a beautiful story. I love hearing all about it, but I want our listeners to know all about how you guys started with this RV life. Yeah, this is a, it's a good story. (laughs) Do I see you want to take it away? Yeah. So we were doing the normal, like we got married. Life was amazing. Um, Nellie worked at a law firm. I was at a creative agency and both were booming. We were doing commercials with like Cristiano Ronaldo, Kobe Bryant. I was having a great time with that and our company was growing. And one day I was in LA on a shoot for a company and Nelly called me and was in tears. And um, we're newly married, excited about life. And she had found a lump in her breast and went in and they took tests and biopsies and the language amongst the hospital and everything, they, they said it looked like cancer, and but they would keep her posted. And I know they typically don't do that as we've met more people, but it was just like, just to prepare you, but we're waiting on results. We'll see. And so I came back early from that shoot just to be with her. And during that in-between time of waiting, it was like this moment of, okay, not expecting this at all. We were just like thriving, newly married, excited about life. And it's like, wow, it really can change just like that. And instead of life happening to us, which it does no matter what you want. <laughs> um, we decided to have, how can we make this happen for us as well and use this as a, an opportunity to, to make the most of it. And so Nelly was like, okay, let's, let's do an adventure every week. I had talked about doing a YouTube channel. It had barely become this thing where people were vlogging. This was back in 2015. Mm-hmm. And so we, we knew some people in Utah that were doing that. And she was like, no, I never want to do that. And then finally she's like, I want to do a YouTube channel. It's like, what? and I want to do an adventure every week. That way we have memories and it pushes us to go live moments to the fullest. So at first it was just every weekend. Yeah. We'd go somewhere within like a four hour drive, like Southern Utah to Zion national park or snow Canyon. We were very outdoorsy. In fact, some of the earliest videos on YouTube that went viral of people doing crazy stunts, that was Nellie and her friends. Mm -hmm. Like she was very adventurous. I don't know if you ever saw people like rope swinging off the arches in Southern Utah. Yes. Yeah. 
Nelly's in that. <laughs> Nelly, oh my goodness. Or there's like a human slingshot and she gets launched over all this. Yeah, just crazy stuff. Wow. I've calmed down since becoming a parent. But... <laughs> I can't wait to go back and watch some of those. I haven't seen those yet. That's awesome. Yeah, those most are... of those are on like our friend Devin Supertramp's YouTube channel. But needless to say, it was hard to date her because she was always doing something epic every weekend and like going out to dinner didn't cut it. It wasn't as exciting. <laughs> But, but so here we were like, okay, well, let's do these close adventures. It was cool because we, right that night, we just turned on the camera and we were very new. I was in the creative agency side, but filmmaking, I was still new. In. It's a little cringe when you watch our first video. Yeah, it is. Like we're still, it was a camera. We got a Costco for a trip that we were going, that I had gone out in the past, but we just started filming and like sharing Hey, we're waiting on test results. We don't know what's going to happen, but here's our plan. Wow. And fast forward, we had a few videos uploaded by the time we got results back and that they were more confident that it wasn't cancer. And then, and then it wasn't, I guess I shouldn't have led that long without saying it, but no, thank God. Yeah. 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 But at that point, the momentum had already started. The wheels were already rolling. And so we're like, well, let's just keep doing these adventures. And that was fun. Once you do that and kind of put that out there, more opportunities just kept coming. Like we had people reach out that were doing a coast to coast trip. The Nortons, we joined up with them going from Mexico to Canada on the coast. And we realized from our road trips that we really enjoyed it and we loved doing our videos. But for me, I just was like, but are we like inspiring people? Like are people just sitting on their couches and watching us do these things and that's it? Like that. I don't like that. Like, I don't want, I don't want that. And so we joked around one day we, we were in Moab and we passed this old Beauville Chevy green van from like 1974. And Bryce was like, well, you want to buy that and travel and bury treasures everywhere? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. And it's one of those things that we played with and we kept trying to push off like, oh, it's probably, you know, like a stick and we don't really know how to drive stick. And we kept coming up <laughs> with excuses and turns out it's an automatic and turns out like, it's actually really a great price. And anyway, I ended up getting the van. And that's when we started our treasure hunts where we buried a treasure, which was either good for an adventure or outdoor gear or something to help people get outside. Yeah, at first it was just, if anyone found it, we would send them something we had that we didn't use. Like anymore. a hammock. Like, this or like... is cool. We'll mail this to you. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And then quickly brands jumped on. So we were sending more actual new products from different outdoor companies and um, made a lot of connections at OR and just, so then it was like, yeah, we did the whole coast hiding treasures all over and, and a few countries. Yeah. And a few countries. And then, wow. then every, yeah, every week we would do an adventure and hide a treasure and it was really cool. We, we got to see behind closed, like there's a lot of people that messaged us and we could tell they were still nervous to get out or they would always just say, Oh, I wish I could do that. And so, or they're like, get your fun in now. Cause once you have kids, it's going to stop. <laughs> and so then we got pregnant <laughs> and two months after our first was born, well, just a weeks after we were antsy, just sitting there. Nelly had a rough recovery. So I guess I was antsy and she was just surviving. Right. And, and he threw out the idea of what if we get an RV and do all 50 states and do our treasures. It's like if you're, if you're recovering states. in a bed or a couch, what if you did while I moved it? And, <laughs> That's awesome. And then days you're filling up to it and so then it grew to this idea where when our first was two months old we bought the rv Rem class a yeah never have driven an rv in our lives <laughs> oh wow i think i had been in one when i was a kid my siblings tell me i my grandparents had one but i don't remember it wow and so yeah we searched all over we talked to a bunch of dealerships and then trusted one that he's like this is the one you want first time i ever drove it was after we bought it and <laughs> um I went to pick up Nelly. We were living in a basement apartment, renting it. And it was supposed to be this magical moment. Like I would be out in front of the house, honking the horn. <laughs> she would come out with our baby. And right. I turned down the street and clipped a branch and broke a vent on the RV. Oh. And just like paranoid, I called her. I was like, hey, can you just run out right now, please? Just get in. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to a church parking lot that was nearby and just parked it and sat there and we're like Googling if we could return it. <laughs> and oh no. <laughs> she's like, this is too big. What are we doing? This is insane. And then we remembered like, Oh no, we want to do an adventure in every state so that we show an adventure within a few hours of everybody in the U S and be like, there's no excuses. Also, if you come find this treasure, you get to do this. 
army tank excursion for free or swim with dolphins for free or helicopter ride for free. And so that's what it turned into. We did adventures in all 50 states and we renovated it in a month. We left when our daughter was three months old and we started on our 50 states and became and full time. We were going to do this in six months, Jamie. We were like six, 50 states in six months. We can oh, wow. do this. <laughs> anyway, we ended up really liking it and it turned into our first round of RVing uh, two and a half years. Wow. And what year was that? That was in 2018. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's so awesome, you guys. So we finished our 50th state right before the like world flipped upside down yeah I actually found out we were pregnant with our second and then yeah COVID hit mm -hmm. oh wow so that's how we got to RV <laughs> <laughs> yeah not your typical way oh my gosh I love that story I did not know the backstory I mean I knew the original backstory of the cancer scare and all of that but I did not know all of the details with buying the RV and that was your first RV and all of that. And just the fact that you had that scare and it really just made you realize like the priorities of life, right? Yeah. And what is important. And, you know, my husband and I are in healthcare. And prior to that, he was in a really bad car accident in 2001. And he was like cut out with the jaws of life and life flighted. Oh my um, gosh. Off work for a year to learn how to walk again. Oh, and I mean, wow. it was just like, absolutely life changing, obviously. And we decided because he was off work for a year getting a lot of therapy, then we got interested in physical therapy. And um, but it was at that point, though, that we realized, you know what, life is so short, like mm -hmm. none of us are promised tomorrow. And why are we living for the weekends or living for one week of a vacation every year? Yeah. And yeah, it's so true. And then actually starting, you know, in healthcare and doing patient care and, and working with all these, you know, elderly people that, I mean, at a moment's notice, their life changed, maybe due to a stroke or something. And when we told them that we were going to start doing travel therapy, that's what actually started us RVing is we started to take travel therapy contracts ac across the country. And we bought an RV just to have like everything with us and didn't know that we would fall in love with RVing or traveling. But you know, when we told our patients what we were doing, they would like grab our hands and say, go, go now, go while you can, you know, and they would have tears in their eyes, like, you know, don't have any regrets because we do now, you know, and it's, it is so life changing. And so I'm so glad that everything worked out. The lump was not cancer and, but it got your, you know, priorities straight and look at this life that you created. I'm so excited for you guys. Thanks. Yeah, RVing, man. It gets all of us, doesn't it? <laughs> it really does. As soon as we try it, we're like, oh, we love it. <laughs> we too. We never been in an RV. Oh my gosh. We didn't even know anybody with an RV. All of our family and friends thought we had lost our minds uh -huh. and they were like so afraid for us. And, and here we are. We had a four bedroom home. It was beautiful. And we were like, we don't want this anymore. We sold it, sold, you know, 95% of our stuff. And and they were like, you guys are nuts. But, you know, a lot of people were like, this is kind of cool, too. And we didn't know if we were going to make the biggest mistake of our lives. But we ended up absolutely loving it. And it's the best decision we've ever made. And I know you guys feel the same way. Mm -hmm. And it's so great to be making memories and documenting and all of that. I'm so glad that you guys started it. So your first RV was a class A and what now was that new or was it used? No, it was definitely used. <laughs> we didn't have money for anyone. And how did you find it? We had a dealership next to us and we knew the guy. His name was Steve Washburn and he just was super helpful. We kind of talked to him and told him what we wanted. And he was bringing some new rigs up from, I think like California and kind of looked for what we wanted, brought it up. And it just, yeah, at first we didn't know him at all. We, so I just drove around with a friend to every RV dealership within an hour and talked to him and just said, Hey, here's what we're wanting to do. What would you recommend? And then we also said like, Hey, we'd love to promote your dealership in exchange for content. And, um, a lot of them just were like, man, whatever. And But he really was such a nice guy. And he was like, I know you think you want this, but here's an RV that I think will actually work. Because we actually had another couple living with us for the first two, three months. <laughs> In the RV. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. They were trying to get pregnant during that trip, too. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah, so it was a, new, a newborn baby. And then they were trying to get pregnant. Yes. They were a really great couple. But um, he was helping us film. 
Yeah, we're filming a documentary with it and even just for our YouTube content. He's an amazing videographer. So. Oh, that's so cool. What an adventure. And so when you guys were looking for this RV, did you know for sure, like, okay, definitely class A or just kind of, did you look at anything else like fifth wheel or anything else? Yeah, we looked at like um, class C's, travel trailers. Um, What's funny is this couple that was with us, he actually was doing a commercial for an RV company. And um, we had just briefly messaged back and forth online. And he was like, hey, we need another adventurous couple to come with us on this trip for a commercial I'm filming. And we couldn't make it. But so we wondered about doing class C's like that one. And then we wondered about a sprinter Sprinter van van. and -hmm. like each of us have a sprinter van. But then when we saw the class A, it was 34, 35 feet. We're like, wow, this is big. Right. They they had the sofa bed and we had the room in the back and and we made like a temporary wall that. (laughs) (laughs) Now that we look back, I'm like, that is so wild. I would never (laughs) do that again. Just, you know, having my own space. But back then it was fine. Surprisingly, we're all still really good friends. Yeah. Oh, Um, that's so cool. What an adventure. You guys are really adventurous. And so what make and model was that? It was a 2004 Damon Daybreak. Uh-huh. Okay. It was awesome. And what do you guys have now? Now we have a 2021 Keystone Raptor. Toy hauler. Yeah, 423 toy hauler. Okay. So we've done the van. We had a van first. Okay. An old 1979 Chevy Beauville that we were building out. And then um, went to an RV, uh, that RV. Now we're with a, yeah, 40... Five. We just kept going bigger. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> now we want to go smaller. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh, that's awesome! I always love to find out because when we were looking for an RV, we honestly didn't even know. Like, we never heard of fifth wheel, never heard of class mm-hmm. A. We just thought everything was an RV or a camper, and yeah. we did not know anything or what we wanted. We were watching YouTube, but. We really just walked through like RV shows and just, you know, kind of walked through and found out, okay, I like this. I don't like this. And so what were your must-haves when you were kind of shopping around? Or actually, we could even talk about what were your must-haves now with this current RV that you have? What were you looking for? Yeah, that's a better question because we had no idea when we first (laughs) looked for an RV. When we first started, we were like, we're just getting something to make the trip comfortable and sell it after. Right. But Um, but must-haves now... Um, for me, I really wanted like this, the living room and the kitchen to be separate Okay. for me. And then also just having the girl's room on like the other side of the trailer was, um, yeah, we nice. Wanted, yeah. yeah. Just yeah, wanted, we just wanted space. that separation just for privacy. Yeah. Quiet and, and for them to have, yeah. And so we had saw some people convert fifth wheel garages, the toy hauler garage into their master bedroom. And loved the idea of having, I was obsessed with the idea of having a deck for our room, mm-hmm. like with the, the patio there. Right. Um, and then just how it's like a room that can also be converted to an office. Because when we were with the Class A, my office was the dinette, which was also the kitchen, which was also the living room, <laughs> and um, which was also our friend's room. Oh my <laughs> so God. it just like, it was like, oh, if we could have designated areas, then we could live in here full time, no issues at all. So we fully renovated our fifth wheel where the garage became our master bedroom and the master bedroom, we took out the bed and built bunks for our girls. Mm -hmm. That is such a cool idea. I love that you guys did that. And so you do have the walkout patio off of your bedroom then. We do, which is mostly the girls play area. And it's not like you just put it down and they play out there, but still we get the views. Oh, I love it. And so what are, and it's probably the things that you were just talking about your must-haves, but I just want to make sure, what are the three things that you love about this RV? Hmm. Three things we love. It's it's huge. I like, now that we renovated, we renovated it with our friends, the Flippin' Tilbies. They are incredible. You need to interview them. They, uh, <laughs> They're awesome. Oh, awesome. I would love to have them on the show. They can take anything and turn it into the exact feeling you're going for. Like, I know when something's good after it's done, but they understand the theory of, oh, let's do this to make you feel more peaceful, to open up the space, to feel more creative in this room. And so... Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. So they... I love the color scheme of it all. It's it's bright, It's but also has like dark colors in it too. Um, so the, the new feeling and the openness I really love. Um, I do love the patio. 
Yeah, the deck. I mean, that's probably like, I think everybody's favorite part. I do love our little girls' room. We made it super, super cute for them so that they can have their own play area. Mm -hmm. And you have two daughters, right? Yeah, Yeah. we have two now. We did even this custom spiral staircase. So in their room, the bed, or the slide out will still come in. And there's no like ladder to worry about falling down or steps in the way of their play area. Oh, nice. Um, And that worked out really well. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, and our shower is pretty nice. Bryce is six five. Oh my goodness! And so he always has to stand in like the the skylight, the, the skylight right. to like get a decent shower in. But our our shower is actually tall enough for him, so that <laughs> that's a win. Oh mm. my gosh, that's really good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Not something you have to think about normally, but right. And so, how long have you guys been in the Raptor? Twenty twenty, right? Yeah. Well, the end of. Yeah, so we got it December of 2020. So we got this one brand new. Okay, awesome. And then, so now that you're in it, and this is your first toy hauler, right? Yes. Okay. And so what are three things that you dislike about it that you wish that you could change? Or you probably did already change it with the remodel. (laughs) But so what are the three things that you're like, okay, we got to change this? I would love to hear about that. Um, Sometimes it's too big. So I don't know. That's not something I can change, I guess, with the model. We love how big it is, but it's like we're 65, 70 feet when we're towing. Right. And so it does, for the most part, we've been able to go almost anywhere we want. But there have been some trips where we're like, well, we can't take the fifth wheel there. Um, so we make other plans. And that's why we're like, it'd be fun to have a smaller rig, too, to go on certain areas and in certain national parks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. I love our rig and on one side it has really big windows, but on the other side it has like almost no windows Mm -hmm. and I wish we had more windows just all around just because natural light just does so much to make your home feel like a home. Yeah. They did an outdoor kitchen on that side, which is awesome at first, but it's like, oh, but then it negates windows on that entire wall inside. Yeah. I've seen that. That's true. It's kind of a give and take. They always say, you know, it's the 80-20 rule. 80% you love and 20% you don't love. But Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's true. Sounds like you guys really do, though, love your RV, which is awesome. And so the remodel was just more of like the color scheme and stuff. Is that what? Oh, no, we changed a lot still. Like the entertainment system was very detailed. It had, there's a lot of RVs have pointless cupboards and shelving. Yes. Like you can't. Like, like <laughs> what is the point of this? You can't do put anything in here. Yes. And so. Or like the shelving is like so high you could barely reach it. And you're like, what is the point? Right. I can't even touch this. Right. Yeah. So we, we negated most all of that. Took out a whole entire cupboard and instead built a bench seat. Took out the couch there. Put in a bench seat that's super nice and comfy. It has storage underneath it. Yeah. That storage that we reach. can actually yeah, can reach. And then um, in the entertainment center, we took out all of the crazy. There was like seven different depths and layers and like designs so it was just kind of subconsciously when you looked at it it wasn't calming it was like this is a weekend rig but to turn it into a home we just made it very minimalist style but very functional too it's got deeper shelving now that we can fit actual books in and decor yeah Um, if if people want to look at it it's it's on our instagram or actually we did a youtube YouTube series about renovating it i was just getting ready (laughs) to ask if you had a youtube tour okay good because i can't wait to see it yeah we actually have like a whole series of us renovating it with the flip and tilbies so Mm -hmm. definitely give it a watch because it was oh my goodness a lot of work not as much as we expected especially the garage we're like oh that'll be so easy that was so much work. Yeah, I would do that differently now, but it's Keystone does not mess around with their garage. It, like the different welding oh, right. ratchet points are very, very good, strong, built into the rig. How long did it take you for like the full remodel from when you started to you were done? Um, we hustled the Flip and Tibbles hustled. We like went really fast. We were with each other every day. All day for what, like six to eight weeks, something like that. Uh-huh. Like it was pretty. They fast. were doing another remodel at the same time, and they were like, "Oh yeah, we can, we can fit yours as well." It They're, was nuts. Yeah, that sounds incredible. I figured you were gonna say months, <laughs> and you said weeks. Oh my gosh, that's awesome! I cannot wait to see it. Yeah, no, typically that's not normal. So anybody yeah. who's listening to this, it usually does take longer, right. but we crushed it oh my gosh it sounds like it yeah and they i felt bad too 
because we had just closed on our RV park and I was so caught up in that too. And Oh my gosh. And I cannot wait to talk about that. So do you, do you kind of want to talk about that now? Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> this is so exciting. I cannot wait for you guys to tell us all about it. Yeah, this was nuts. So after we did the 50 States, um, we were just kind of like, what's next? We did a, um, the national tour with camping world and toured with him and it was really fun. Had a good time. And then afterwards, you know, we were in our RV and trying to figure out what was next for us. And yeah, during, so during COVID that you couldn't have normal RV shows, right? So we were the face of like a digital national RV show with another couple. And so we traveled coast to coast, like three, two, three times yeah, during that. It was fun though. Awesome. It kind of started as a joke. Like we're like, okay, well, where do we want a home base? Do we want to do land? Like our good friends, Less Junk, More Journey, they have like a spot where they have hookups. Right. And we're like, do we want to do something like that where we can always have a place to go back, um, especially if the world goes crazy. Right. And then we we started looking at houses. But then we remembered like, you know how we talked about like how we should get an RV park someday? And we took notes all the time as we went to different RV parks of like, what is it that is irreplaceable like what actually makes a different at this a difference at this rv park right that's such a good idea yeah and and so it was like yeah but that's later in life like there's no way we could do that now you know those like annoying friends you have jamie who just like push you to be your best self yeah. and like <laughs> and they like help you see that your dreams are possible like they're so great but a little annoying because you're like oh my gosh I, there is a way to do this oh uh... we have some of those friends and um, his name's Cameron and Char. They're really awesome. But they basically were like, hey. Yeah, yeah, I sent him a couple listings for homes of like, oh, this would be sweet. Like, look at all this, this area. here. We were looking at areas like Biloxi, Mississippi, mm-hmm. where the land was cheaper, but that's because of hurricanes. Oh, but, right. um, <laughs> also beautiful in some spots. And so we're like that. And then he goes, or this RV park. And I was like, yeah, I saw that. But that's. <laughs> over a million dollars and he's like but let's just imagine like if you already had it like how did you get it and that's totally what his mindset was wow. which made bryce think and, and i was like bryce good... no i was like don't do this like that's we can't. a good <laughs> hack though because i think so often we write opportunities off because we're like i can't or i don't right i'm not able and if you just skip that first wall and just say let's assume that i did do it How did I do it? I love that. And you almost work backwards mentally. And so he's like, yeah, pretend that you already are able to finance it. What would you do for that? And I was like, I don't know. So we were looking into it and like, oh, wait, RV parks are businesses. So we're not just buying land. We're buying a business that's bringing in revenue. So that helps with the banks. Yes. And unfortunately, not to our favor, this RV park was not bringing in bank. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But it. It was in a beautiful area where the value was going up. Well, he didn't run it as an RV park. In fact, he did a lot of things under the table that we later found out. A lot of them do. I'm sure. But we've actually looked at a few. There was one seriously considered in Tennessee, one in Oregon. Um, And then we were about to close, like put an offer on another RV park. And the lady, she really liked us. And she was like, yeah, I hope it works out. And we had finally figured out a way that we could temporarily finance it until the bank came around. And um, we we were kind of, so we were also praying to know how to go about this. And my mom had said, she's like, you need to pray specifically. Like, don't just have these general prayers, but what do you actually need help with that's out of your control that you could pray for? And I was like, um. uh, that I need a million dollars. And <laughs> so she's like, okay, pray for that if you feel like you're supposed to do this. And so I I did. And what's funny is an old friend called me and was like asking me about some social media marketing stuff because of my background. And he's like, what are you up to now? I'm like, well, we're trying to get funding for this RV park. And he's like, my dad actually wants to invest in one. Oh. And he's got he's got a million dollars set aside. I was like, are you kidding me? Oh, that's only God. Only God yeah. does stuff like that. Yeah. Wow. And, but we didn't end up going that route, but it was a nice wake up call of like, wait. Totally. More is possible. And so when we called this lady, though, to say like, hey, we figured out a temporary thing. She's like, I literally just signed with an all cash offer. No contingencies. I'm so sorry. <sighs> and so that was devastating because it's like, wait, we've been going through this journey for three months. And felt like the opportunity was possible. And then I waited on it. Mm. Um, and so I remember 
being devastated. And I told Nelly, I was like, I think this was to prepare us for when the real opportunity comes that we don't wait. And then just shortly after, days after we got a call from a realtor saying, hey, because we had put feelers out there and asked all around. And she said, this is not on market yet. It's about to go on market. And they said, you could come look at it. Wow. So I, I flew out, went and looked at it and um, in Swan Valley, Idaho, and it just spoke to my soul. Oh. <laughs> Well, the videos that I've seen of it is like, are you kidding me? That looks so so incredible. I am so happy how it worked out for you guys, because that certainly seems meant to be. That's so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It it really, and what's crazy is, long story short, I know I've already rambled a bit, but once we got in a contract on it, then the actual financing became so difficult. Mm. And we kept getting told we need more time as this bank. And then the bank would say, nope, never mind." So we were literally like with the ninth, 11th financial institution. Wow. And it was like, what am I doing? This is just, we definitely weren't qualified. We didn't have the liquidity for it. Um, but we, we had a passion and we knew what it could be. And um, uh, reached out to an old mentor and just said, hey, can you help me put together an investor letter? Cause we're maybe need, we need to go that route now. And so he did. And then the next day he called me, he's like, Hey, actually, never mind. I want to be a part of this. And he's like, I think you need to talk to these other people too, that I know. And so we had like 10 days left. If that wow. it was so stressful and met with them and they helped us get a short term loan until we could get longer financing. And, um, so it took everything we had financially, literally, and we got it. And then we realized after like, Oh, wait, <laughs> <laughs> now that we have it, we need more to improve it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And we actually knew that, like, it was like, okay, well, then we'll get a construction loan with the bank. And that's been a whole journey in and of itself that we'll figure out. We're, we're still in process <laughs> figuring that out. So in the meantime, we're making all the little updates we can as we go. And But it's in such a beautiful valley. So for those who are listening who don't know, Swan Valley is about 40 minutes outside of Jackson Hole and about an hour away from the Grand Teton National Park. Wow. Not too far from Yellowstone as well. So we're we're just in a beautiful valley and we, we were there just actually all weekend getting stuff ready and ugh, it's just so happy. And so we want to invite everybody to come out and that's what's leading us to create our summer camp event that we're throwing this summer at our property because it really is just, it's so epic. Like, Jamie, I wish you could come. Oh, I am so bummed that I'm not going to be there because this idea is so awesome. I am so glad that you guys did this. Now, this is your first one, right? This is your first summer camp? Our first summer camp, yeah. We've thrown other events at the RV park and have done retreats and other things that have been super fun. But yeah, this one is like... It's going to be big. <laughs> yeah. Please tell us all about it. I've researched a lot. I've heard a lot about it, but please just tell us all. Is there still tickets left? There yes, are. there are tickets left. Okay. Um, they are limited spots. But yeah, don't wait. Whoever's hearing this, we would love to have you. Yeah, but it is for all home on wheels. So RVers, Landovers, Van Life, Schoolies. And if people do not have that, we do offered bring people to bring their own tents. So yeah, we, we just campsites. locked in some really good utilities for people that are coming in tents as well to make their experience really pleasant. Like we have eight shower stalls coming in. Wow. Um and bathrooms. And so we're basically like the whole premise of starting our YouTube channel years ago was to make memories ourselves and motivate others to live life to the fullest. So every decision we've made with our content and with our partnerships and stuff has always been, will this facilitate more adventures for others and for us? And so hiding the treasures got people out and now we have a campground and the whole goal was like, look, just show up and you will leave with like paradigm shifting experiences. You'll leave with memories and experiences that are more (laughs) bonding. And so one of the events we did, a couple years ago at the campground. So this is our third season that's starting up right now. We did a giveaway where seven couples were flown in from all over the country. And we did like a good reset retreat with some dear friends and other companies. And basically they had these days together to go on adventure and then come back and rekindle their relationship with their significant other. And it, it blew our minds of how 
like all of them still to this day keep in touch and that how great the experience was. And we're like, how can we do this for more? Wow. So this one's going to be the same thing, but not for couples, but families and couples. Yeah, we have, families, we have couples, singles. Couples. It's it's for everyone, but we want to make it like, like, did you go to summer camp when you were little? Oh, heck yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Right. And it was like nostalgic. Like you think about it and it's just happiness. And so yes. like, we want to create that for the kids. We want to create that nostalgia for the adults and we want to be able to create like family memories. So if people don't have summer plans, if they don't have the budget for it, because family vacation can be super expensive, like just show up, buy your ticket. It's so, so cheap. What we're offering and the sponsors we have and the products we're giving everybody is way more than the price of a ticket. Yeah. Like already, if you buy a ticket, you're getting more products back that are more value if you bought them than, than a ticket. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. So just a little quick recap. It's when people show up on Wednesday, it's going to be a welcoming party. And then we're going to have a lake day because we have a Palisades Reservoir. And it's a huge, beautiful, glorious reservoir right next to our campground. And we have the famous Snake River, which is like number one for fly fishing. Oh, wow. That's the start of the South Fork. In the world. Yeah, start of, start of the South Fork. And then we're going, we're having like a Teton day. We're going into the Tetons. We're hiking. We're going to Spring Lake. And then whoever wants to can sign up for, we have a private shuttle taking up to 40 people whitewater rafting and they're like really fun you get the whole experience of peace and calm and then it rocks for a little bit <laughs> um but and- those are lim- those are definitely limited spots so if people want to get those we were able to grab discounted rates for those who wanted to do that experience uh-huh. oh my gosh this sounds like a dream it's so awesome everything you guys are talking about is like oh i cannot believe i can't be there but oh uh, <laughs> hopefully you guys do this again next year we can plan it yeah. depends how this year goes <laughs> so everybody <laughs> yes. come <laughs> but we that's the plan though is to do this again we we even have the last day a really fun festival day planned with a concert and then also Two trucks we're working out plans for a candy drop because we oh my god we have a big area that's a grass airstrip that we own and so like just to make it where Basically, every day we're planning moments where families will talk about it for years to come that are experiences you don't just get anywhere. Oh, total epic. I mean, every single thing you're talking about is totally epic. And we had actually a candy drop at our church a few years ago. Really? Yes, where the helicopter flew over. And oh my gosh, it was so cool. That's so awesome, you guys. We're we're trying. We're trying to make it really, really great. We just heard from the fire chief. He's there bringing fire trucks for part one day to help play water games with the kids. How <laughs> fun. You guys have the best ideas. Oh, my gosh. I feel a little crazy doing them. But, yeah, so tickets are live, and it's going to be epic. We really do want to just provide such a great experience for others. Oh, this sounds so awesome. Yeah, just back to, like, when we first launched our YouTube channel, and we are like, we want to adventure more. It was crazy how opportunities come to you. And so we're like, let's create an event where anyone who's like-minded can meet other people like-minded and form friendships. And we're hoping that it's, yeah, a memorable experience. It will be. It'll be such a great experience for everyone. Totally. And all the friendships, like you said, there's going to be people there that, you know, have no idea what to expect and their lives will be changed. Their families will be talking about this forever. The priceless memories made. I mean, oh my gosh. And I mean, it just sounds like the retreat too. Like how many marriages did you save? You know, I mean, you don't even know what people are going through and just that retreat that you planned at the beginning, like, you know, to give couples an experience to, you know, spend time together and just reconnect. And you just never know what they were going to go through before or after that. And then, you know, now it's like, oh, I just, how many lives you're changing and doing all the stuff that you're doing, how many memories and just priceless things that you're giving these people. I love your hearts and I love your ideas. This is so cool. I can't wait to see what happens next. Us too. (laughs) Thank you, by the way. Yeah. That's so cool. I just, oh my gosh. Like I said, I'm a huge fan and I'm even more so like the more I get to know you guys, I'm like, oh my gosh. This is so cool. It's right up our alley. This is exactly our reason for starting RVing too. It's like we, you got to like cherish each day and you know, live in the present instead of like, like we talked about just, you know, being in your job and living for the weekends or that one vacation, yeah. you know, that one week yeah. vacation you get every year. But, oh, that's so cool. I'm so excited for you guys. And then just a lot of families too, like summer comes around, school's out. And so they're like, okay. And 
they keep the busy schedule that happened during school where you're doing sports camps and everything else and scheduling and where it's just like, go, 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 go still. Like, it's really exciting, but then everyone's ready for school to start again because they're like tired of that. And it's like, you need moments like this that kind of break the cycle and you're not all go, go, go on your phone, but you're still having epic experiences every day. Absolutely. That's so important. And summer does go by so fast. And then all of a sudden you're back in the grind of school and work and, you know, you kind of miss the opportunities sometimes. And yeah, I know so many, you know, you hear so many families like Randy and I don't have any children, but well, you know, we have a ton of kids in our family with nieces and nephews and stuff. And so many people are like stressed about the summer and like, Oh, what are we going to do with the kids and, Mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff. And it's like, you know, if you, cherish each day and try to plan some things that you know you're gonna remember for the rest of their lives and your lives it's so cool I love the summer camp idea so everything that we talk about there'll be links in the show notes and you'll have a page on our website and all of that but I want to really make sure that people realize that this summer camp is July 17th or the 21st right yes and so got to grab the tickets now mm-hmm. and the RV park is the park at Swan Valley in Idaho is yes okay all right awesome I just want to make sure I have that and like I said we'll put links in the show notes and all of that but it's so exciting I cannot <laughs> wait to watch everything are you guys going to be you know doing Instagram reels and stuff like that during the whole thing yes we'll keep everybody updated who's missing out so they come next year (laughs) call the FOMO camera (laughs) yeah totally yes absolutely Uh, well I would love to continue asking more about your RV life if you guys don't mind um it's hard to get off of this uh summer camp though I have so many questions about that too but I want to ask you because you guys have, you know, partnered with so many brands and you have so many different, like even when you just started and doing the hidden gifts and the treasures and stuff, Yeah. you guys obviously have had so many RV accessories or different things. If you could give our listeners three of your favorites right now, what are they? You'll have to come back next week to hear about their favorite RV must-haves, find out their top five favorite places, and learn from all the valuable information that they share. You won't want to miss part two of this great conversation, so be sure to come back next week. You'll find all the links to Summer Camp, their RV park, and all of their social media and YouTube in our show notes and on our website at roamyourhome.com slash thejurgies. Be sure to come back next week for part two of this awesome conversation. But until then, be sure to catch up on any episodes that you missed. We're getting such great feedback from the show and I appreciate your support. It truly means the world to me. Thanks so much for listening and I hope to see you on the road. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Roam in Your Home podcast and YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this episode, we'd love it if you would subscribe to our show and consider giving us a five-star review. It's free and would mean the world to us and help us grow. If you know anyone who would also enjoy this podcast, please share it with a friend. I would also love to connect with you on Instagram or Facebook at Roam in Your Home. Come back next week for another fun adventure, but until then, stay safe and we hope to see you on the road.